half a selling to selling internally to get anything done. So you are really listening, adapting, and collaborating with your ensemble in order to make good improv, but in order to make good sales. Everything leads to growth with the National Association for Sales Professionals. The Leads to Growth podcast with the National Association for Sales Professionals provides in-depth discussions sharing the best sales, prospecting, influence, and communication skills, as well as sales training techniques to take your professional sales career to the next level. Hello and welcome to another Leads to Growth podcast. I'm your host, Christopher McCoy. We're here with the National Association of Sales Professionals, and we have got a a great guest, uh, someone I've been excited to uh, interview today, uh, Mr. Robert M. Peterson. Uh, this gentleman uh, is a distinguished professor of sales at the Northern Illinois University. Uh, we know we love our sales professors here at the universe or at uh, NASP. So very excited to have you here. Uh, Robert has earned six national teaching awards uh, while starting uh, like a, a lot of us in 100% commission sales uh, as a 100% commission sales person. Everybody's like, oh, why do I got to start with all commission? That's where the money is. And that's why we got the professor here. Thanks for being with us here, Mr. Peterson. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks awesome. for having me. Absolutely. Excited. So we got a little uh, conversation today. We're going to talk about the future of sales. We're going to talk about the value uh, of the skill of sales and why, why we're teaching it at the universities now. And, and I'm seeing more and more uh, universities starting to implement uh, uh, teaching of sales and sales departments, schools of, uh, of sales, and all this is starting to grow. <laughs> Robert, tell me a little bit about uh, uh, your history in sales and, and, and what led you from a successful salesperson to decide to teach uh, at the university and and be an ambassador for sales for the world. Uh, well, again, thanks for having me. At level, we'll, we'll share some highlights. I'm sure the, the folks want to get to the nitty gritty. But I, you know, I came out of college and I was going to be a, I was going to be a sales rep because my dad was. He was a career salesman. My mom was a high school teacher. She taught business courses, and so I would, I'm like the perfect epitome of what I'm doing now of a blend. So I got out of, out of school. I took my first sales job out in Washington D.C. and I just just loving running and gunning. Um, Moved over to a 100% commission inside phone jo uh, sales job when I was selling stock market quotation systems. So uh, mostly to the individual investors. So there was a lot of, you know, feeling out, understanding, didn't have a great marketing team behind us at all. So I just started making my own stuff and sending it out, which is the antithesis of what every sales manager and every marketing manager ever would want their sales team to do. It's like, oh yeah. So, you know, I have 15 different pitches and 15 different talk tracks. So, you know, I was, uh, it was just in, in my, in my blood and what eventually made the pivot. Cause I, I mean, I, I enjoyed that. And then I, I moved with that company to the, to the Bay area, you know, 3000 miles, the, uh, the other direction. Um, from then I went, uh, I, I did a stint in Japan, different, different calling. And, um, but when I came back, I was like, you know, what really excites me is the, the, the sales end. Mm -hmm. I have a horrible um, attention uh, issues. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is going to be a long interview for both of us then. <laughs> I'm a shiny ball guy too. So <laughs> Uh, so I'm like, you know what, I, I think I want to marry the, uh, and I had a lot of history of uh, his, um, education people in the family. So I was like, you know what, let's marry the, uh, the, the two things together. And, uh, you know, so sales, act, act, active sales, but also education. You know, I, I earned my PhD and I went out and I started teaching and they were just kind of blown away how this new assistant professor had gotten such great reviews. And I, and I was kind of shocked that they were shocked. I'm like, well, sales and teaching is almost, I mean, they, they overlap so much. And today's student, we can talk about this definitely later, but today's student, I mean, I'm a good part of it is I'm a content expert. And then the other part is I'm a freaking therapist and, and a motivator and like, you know, trying to huddle these, these people who are, you know, 21 years ish old and they're nuts as we were back in our day too. Um, so in, in a long, you know, long story short is that's kind of a quick overview of, of where I was and how I, how I got here today. I love it. And, and I love the idea that, that, um, sales was innate in you. It's, a, it's something that we teach a lot of people, but it's that 
that that skill of going out and doing for yourself, right? That that inside out hustle that that really defines a lot of salespeople, and also I think it's a, what helps that skill translate into other places. Uh, so, tell me a, a little bit about what y'all are doing over there at uh, Northern Illinois University, uh, and. and and how you're preparing uh, this next generation. Because I heard, I think it was um, Bill Gates said sales uh, is, is the skill of, of the next uh, two decades. It's gonna be the most important skill. And uh, you see it more and more now. We, we actually work with the University of South Carolina uh, mm -hmm. and they do uh, our CPSP sales program for their marketing students because most of those marketing students yes. end up in sales jobs right off the bat and it teaches them selling themselves so tell me about what y'all are doing and how you're preparing this next generation oh my goodness you hit them all on, on the uh, hit it all right there look uh sales it's a it's it's a calling sure absolutely it's, it was in my it was in my blood but a lot of people don't know it's in their it's in their blood until <clears throat> like oh i mean they come to school and especially the business students because their parents may or may not know and they all they send them to accounting because accounting is going to be <laughs> you know you're going to get a job <clears throat> there's a certification yeah, I've had more recovering accounting students come to my classes than than anything else. Uh, but you know, you're you're, but you're right about these other other things. It's not just business students, but it's the other majors, the psychology, the the sociology, the history. All these students, like, well, you're not going to be the museum curator as a history student when you come out of school. You're going to do something, and you're going to hang out with customers. The more, the closer you are to customers, and I tell my students, the money sticks to the hands that transact it. So try to be where the transaction is, and you're going to get more money. The further away, you're going to become a little bit more of an overhead type category. But money sticks to the hands that transact it. Try to be where you are. You don't have to be the sales rep. You could be sales ops. You could be sales enablement. There's all kinds of different things if you don't want that quota hanging over your head. And that kind of refer uh, what you, I think what Bill Gates, I hadn't heard that quote, but that was what uh, Bill Gates was referring to. It's like, you know, you can have sales as an occupation, as a, as a quota and a number hanging on you, and you got to hit your number. Or you can have sales as a as a as a skill set. So I don't I don't go to work hitting my quarterly number. I go to work, but I use sales that skills all the time. I'm I'm having meetings. I'm pitching ideas. I'm I'm looking for budget. I'm looking for headcount. Uh, those are all sales skills. Um, so we're grabbing students from all over our university, and there's a bunch of other universities that are doing great um, stuff as well. Um, Bringing them in, we only have four at our university. It's a certificate, so we get four okay. uh, four bona fide sales classes. You got your intro, let them dip their toe. Mm -hmm. Then you have a sales management uh, and KPI type class. That, that well, then we have also have the one that I teach, which is business business selling, and then we have the advanced sales. In our place, you have to uh, uh, apply and do an interview in order to get into the advanced sales class. Wow, so it's not like, great. hey, I showed up, I got my tuition dollars. Um, we have some other cool things. We have a, a bus trip that brings them uh, during the winter months uh, to different uh, of our corporate partners. And um, I have a trip out to the Silicon Valley to get them out. If the only time <clears throat> you think you're gonna learn is in the four walls of some university or the four walls of your own Zoom at home room, <clears throat> you're nuts, okay? <laughs> So let's get out. And so we press the flesh. We take these kids to the, to the Silicon Valley and we have meetings all week and the growth during that week, you can see the growth. And I, <clears throat> I've done it in enough years that I can see when we arrive on Saturday, we do social things. We go out and see the Bay you know, area <clears throat> and then we start hustling and working and it's long days. And then by Tuesday, they're starting to get it. By Wednesday, they got it. By Thursday, the, the aha moment has really hit them. And then <clears throat> that's where the internal group dynamics start breaking down. <laughs> Put a bunch of 21 year olds <laughs> together for a week in a, you know, in a hostel. Um, uh, there's so much human drama, so much. Oh, I never thought of that. I never knew that. And then um, at least for me, I just, uh, you know, they come with me at night. I pay for dinner and but I'm not going to some, you know, taco truck. <laughs> we're doing, we're doing dim sum and, and sushi and Thai. You'd be able to believe how many people have not ventured out of their family's meals. So, <clears throat> but that's what you need to do in order to connect with your say with, with your customers. 
you you have to understand that we're all different, that what motivates them is different. And certainly, to, you know, depend on your sales methodology. Hey, what kind of questions and what order and how am I going to ask them? How am I going to discover information? How is my sales enablement team going to support? It's because when the customers come to the website, they're always not talking to me. How is it that we're helping them on their continuous journey? And that's what we're exposing them to um, in the sales program at Northern. I love that. I love that. And it's it's so funny too because when 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 you start to expose people to sales, they start to realize where influence is present in, in every area of their life, and they start to understand the skill. You know, sales has that 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 stigma about it. You know, that 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 bad word. It has it. And it's something that we, you know, that we fight, you know, most people, even in sales, like, oh, I don't feel like a sales, I don't want to be a salesperson, you know, but no, you're, you, you do, you want to be a, every one of us is an influencer at some point, either we're being influenced or we're influencing somebody else. And so I would love to know in your, in your classes, are, are you going a lot with the strategy or are you starting a lot with the psychology? Oh my goodness. I am all about learning by doing. So mm-hmm. there's not as much uh, uh, strategic thought of, 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 hey, what's our strategy? What's our go-to-market? <clears throat> um, that's certainly an overlay, and then it's a pressure point <clears throat> that I continuously reinforce. But I'm down into the, into the grasses still with them, mm-hmm. getting them to, uh, in my particular class, hey, you're going to make a... You're you're going to go on this uh, uh, this sales journey, and, and there's multiple role plays, and we can discuss that if you want. <clears throat> um, but I partner with the American Association of Inside Salespeople (AAISP) yeah. for to give them for some phone skills because these people here here's my phone. These people have never don't even know it does this. <laughs> oh, for those who are podcasting and are not seeing this, I'm holding my cell phone to my ear. <laughs> for those who are visual, they're like it's like oh. Uh, um, no, I'm only going to type. I'm going to text on this. They have never left a voicemail. Is it? <clears throat> do you listen to your voicemails? No. <clears throat> well, if my mom calls, yes, because she's paying for my phone. <laughs> I was like, well, all right, there. But so the first one of the first things I have them do is they're going to do um, in this stream of this role play, this semester long role play. They're going to leave a voicemail. They're going to face a gatekeeper. And then unfortunately, these poor people are going to face me at the end um, as, as I am the target. I am the lukewarm call. I saw a white paper. I left some dig- I left my digits and you're calling me. So it's, it is, it's not totally cold, um, but you're going to be surprised. And so let's work through that voicemail. Let's work through the gatekeeper. And then let's wow. work through that first call. So that's what I'm doing with them. Uh, and then amongst uh, many other things, but that's what they, they love because one of the other things we do in my class every week is improv. Um, Such a beautiful practice. It really, really is. I was lucky enough to, to here in Chicago to, to go down and do a bunch of things with um, the Second City. Oh, wow. And so I went down there and took all their coursework. I did some stand up. Um, Good for you. I, you know, I did a little background on, on, on you, Chris. So I, I've got a little stand up prepared. So I'm going to. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> oh man, I was ready for it. Just roast me. Let's go. <laughs> Every week they have a couple of in- improvs. Some are really short, some are a little bit longer. So the week I introduce, in, in theory, they're supposed to have read. Uh, I love the Trish Pertuzzi book, Sales Development Playbook. And so I, they're supposed to have read that. I mean, I, I go over, there's PowerPoint slides, there's a narration. We're trying to flip the classroom. So when they come to me, they're not listening to me. Sure. Just, Look at chapter two and then read chapter two to them. Right. Um, so they should be ready to play. And so when they come, it's like, all right, here's the deal. And I'm going to have fun with them. And it's just always going to be a lean and smack. And it's just, I have so much fun. <clears throat> it's like, okay, let's do this. All right. You got 30 seconds. You're going to hear a beep and you got a partner. First person goes is I, I want to hear your, your best breakup voicemail. You're breaking up with this person. <clears throat> and so they're like, what? Why? Like, beep and so they you know they leave it you know it's not you it's me and you know, we were growing apart and dude. so we, we talked about that and now it's the other person's turn to do the same thing well now they got their feet under them they're excited it is over the top um and then i bleed into a, a, a another one and then i hit the third one which is like you work for a, a gp mobile gps firm you're calling on uh, this michael beard who's the 
who's the dude, <clears throat> and you're going to leave a voice message for him. Beep. Yeah. And so, so at that point, then, I mean, these are these are educated people. They're about to get a college degree in the next, you know, that semester, the next year. And they've they felt inadequate. They felt unprepared. Mm. And so the cool thing is, is then I got them. Now they're going to listen. So for the next hour, we work through the ins and outs of how do we go about doing this and why and yet. So we do that every week with you know some type of some type of improv to build some energy to get them to to listen, adapt, and collaborate, which is what great improv. If you're going to go out and pay money to go to a show, you don't want to see a bunch of people arguing. <laughs> like, no, no, I can get no. that at home, right? <laughs> um, I want to see, but in order to have good improv, you have to listen to the other your other ensemble, your other scene mates, and then you have to adapt to what's going on and where the scene's headed, and then you have to collaborate together because it's it's not a monologue, not one person scene. And if you look at that, it's the same thing as sales. You have to listen, you have to adapt, and you have to collaborate. Collaborate with. Um, with your customer, obviously, or your prospect, but also everybody who's senior listening, watching this, knows that half of this, half of selling is selling internally to get anything done. And get, <clears throat> so you are really listening, adapting, and collaborating with your ensemble in order to make good improv, but in order to make good sales. And after a while, they start to understand. They, they. I was just reading the debriefs from uh, the whole semester, and a lot of them have bought into the. I got comfortable being uncomfortable with you, Dr. P. Oh, that is beautiful. We all, we, we speak very highly of that level of uncomfortable. All right. That, that's on the other side of uncomfort is growth, right? Your, your, yeah. your ability to face things that are uncomfortable is, is your directly equated to your ability to grow. Right. This is this is how we get to growth. And I love what you're saying here, because I was just having this conversation with somebody the other day as we were walking uh, down the street in a city, um, going to a place with people. And we we're like, whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> and we were interacting with people. And, and my friend had, he's like, I, I feel weird talking to people face to face. I haven't done this in a while. And he was having to learn to communicate again, almost after being a year without these these yeah. random interactions. And I forget that this generation coming through, it's because it's almost like teaching phone skills was like, oh no, you don't do that anymore. Everybody knows how to talk. Everybody, all they do is talk on the phone now. And yeah. now we're like, we're teaching it back from scratch again because people got comfortable on the text and the SMS. So I didn't even, you're really doing a lot with communication, teaching yeah. people how to communicate and listen. Oh, active listening. I mean, I, I, I start off each semester and I give this long, you know, <clears throat> Dr. P goes to Florida and now you're going to watch all his home movies. All right. <clears throat> and, and, and I go long enough to be where they're like, really? How much it's more? Going. I mean, I tell them I was born. I have older brothers. I was, you know, DC, San Francisco, Memphis for my PhD. Got it. And I said, okay, what'd you learn? <laughs> and then they're like, uh, and then they, they tell me some of the tidbits like, well, you're, you're, you, you know, went to Indiana university. I'm like, yep. Yep. Good job. Yep. Uh, you got a, a wife and a set of twins. Yep. Yep. And uh, it's like, okay, that's the obvious. That's just pure recall. What's the customer selling you? They're like, what the customer said. Yeah. I, I'm believe it or not. I was your customer. Did you, mm -hmm. did you actually actively listen to me on day one here in class? Did your first cold call? Now they're, now they're freaking out. Like, yeah. oh. And then we start piling in. And it's like, okay. And they start telling me historical facts. I'm like, okay, good, good, good. Now what? It's like, well, you move around a lot. I was like, ah, oh, I said, yes, one step ahead of the law. I was like, but I get that. But what does that mean? Um, and they're thinking, it's like, well, you're, you're willing to take chances. I'm like, yes. yes. Now you're starting to understand me and what, now, how does that relate to you? Mm. Um, they're stuck. They generally don't yeah. get it. It's like, let me help you out. What's the chances of you coming to me and telling me a sad story and me giving a damn? 
probably not going to be too high, high on my list, correct? I said, yes, yeah. if you're donating mo- a bone mur- mirror and, or you're, you know, you had to stop and, and, and have help an accident, I got your back. I said, but well, I didn't plan very well and I didn't do this. The dog so, ate my homework, ain't going to fly. <laughs> somebody just this week missed the deadline for the final turn in for the paper because they were, oh, no, Dr. P, I didn't, I thought it was Sunday. I, I didn't know it was Tuesday. I just got back from New York City. And so I'm like, I wrote to this student. I said, oh, wow, that I remember back in the day when I was back in the day during finals week, we actually went all the way to the library. And, you know, and <laughs> yeah. so they're going to get a healthy dose uh, of sarcasm. Most sure. understand it, grow with it and, and learn from it. But that's the way I, I, I handle my class. Wait. But they're on. They're always on, on when whatever. you're speaking with sarcasm, you're 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 using tone and you're using body language, which pe- which means people have to be more observant of you at that time. They have to be more engaged to know when when is it sarcasm, when is it real, and especially with the way you are, because I can hear you dropping some jokes in there that might fly the same way that uh, that that one of your valuable points would would drop as well. So I, I really love. Um, I love the idea that, I mean, you're really using psychology or you're really leveraging the, 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 the human needs. You're giving them the certainty, but you're taking them through discomfort and, 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 and giving them the opportunity to create the gap between where they are and what they might accomplish with this too. And I, I really love that. Um, so I, one, one question I had for you, how are you, uh, and, and I, I would imagine a lot of sales managers are out there. Do you get a lot of mixed age groups and do you get any any older um people looking to come and freshen up their sales skills and 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 do you have a um is it difficult to blend the teaching between the the older and younger generations now for the most part most part we're getting uh traditional and you know traditional is 18 to 22 but i'd say 18 to 24 to 5 ish so you're really uh, and there's definitely a discrepancy content. between the maturity of the, the 23, 24 versus the 21. It, yeah. it, if you can remember back that way, that far, like, oh, yeah, you just you just you just kind of grew up. And so they're fixing some things. But, um, yeah, we do get some older, older and the, just the self-discipline of, of being a human when you get yeah. older, it, it, it changes. Um, but I don't I don't I in my master's degree class, I'm teaching a, a digital a digital selling strategies course right now to the grads. Um, they have a lot more ways to, you know, to, to get all this, to stick to the ribs because they have some experience. <clears throat> but there I have uh, 23 through probably about 35. And it's, and it's just a different experience for, um, for the number of years you're you've been in business, but also the number of years you've been on on the earth, and like any sales manager listening watching, variance is your killer. Give me a bunch of top performers, then then I don't even know why they're paying you, right? <clears throat> but it, or lower performers, like all right, let's do some training. I'm going to do some ride-alongs. I'm going to do some uh, listens to your calls. I, well, let's do this. Let's make let's make this happen. <clears throat> it's when you get this total variance within your sales team, and 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 if your sales if your senior sales people don't see the role of okay, I, I can help once in a while and and give guidance and whatnot, because again. It would be nice to think that the sales manager is responsible and end all and be all, but they they can. It has to be the culture that he or she helps pr- uh, create. But the rest of the team, the um, you know the I mean, I was a bull in the china shop, but it was just too stupid to know what what I was doing wrong when I was twenty three in sales. But some of the senior guys, I still remember one of the guys. <clears throat> I was like, I got to get a business card. I was like, all right, should I? Uh, I mean, they asked me for my own time. Should I put an account executive? <clears throat> and, and and Steve Griebel, God rest his soul. He's, you know, he's, um, you know, Rob, you might want to have a few sales under your belt before you call yourself a sales executive. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, uh, all right, man. That sounds like a good plan. I'm yeah. sales rep. Yeah. Uh, so no, so yeah, the yet. variance no, is no cheats yet. <laughs> I love guru. That. Sales yeah, guru. Right. Sales guru. So I I really love and and uh, I really love what you're doing over there. I love that you're starting with the foundation. Uh, it, it could be you know I've had some conversations with some others who are teaching sales and and they go right to the strategy. They go right to the uh, you know the scripts, the steps to follow, and, and and those are all great. But when you when you 
fall off track or when those don't work, you don't know where else to go. And I love that you're teaching adaptability, flexibility, you're teaching um, people to utilize. And, and, and these are our these are brilliant skills that translate to, to good human beings. Well, and maybe I, I should have you come in and guest speak because the initial shocker is like, well, what's the right answer? It's like, you guys, <clears throat> no one is going to pay you the amount of money that you want to get paid and that you're probably going to get paid if the answer was doable and understandable. They're paying you to hang out with that that fog, that that variance, that that's what you, that's the value that you bring. You want to have difficult sales you want to have difficult sales uh challenges that are that are solvable if they're easy saable e easy sales challenges then then someone just put click on the order taker That's yeah. an order taker yeah and if it's really overly complex then it's you know it's it, it's never going to happen um absolutely or, or you're it, or it's too it's you're too early in this in this thing to be i mean how many how many airbus or boeing does uh planes does a sales rep sell it's like well it it's a years and years thing so some guy doesn't show up and like all right we're gonna hit the third quarter we're gonna hit it and we're gonna sell sell oh i'm, I'm 18 of these dreamliners and i'm gonna make it it's not gonna happen no. so yeah just the just the the uh the excitement of the of the younger folks as we all were and still are but they they think that there's an answer yeah like, that's why you get paid, man. <laughs> just let me know the answers. That's that's very funny too, because I just had a great conversation with um, uh, Megan Bowen, and she was talking about, um, you know, her new thing is there is, you know, the status quo, or, or um, uh, she she always challenges the status quo and this idea of of the way things used to be done, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's like, well, how, how, like when somebody starts in a new position, or how how did everybody do it before? Okay, I'll I'll do it that way. No, no evaluation, no, no looking at the outcome and starting with a creative thought process, but how was it done? Okay, then follow that order. And I think that the people who are making ways and having success today are going, oh, wait, what do I need to get done? All right, let me figure out a new way. Let me question, let me try something new. And that comes from an internally motivated place. And I think as you teach sales, as you teach influence, you're teaching people to find internal motivation uh, so that they can influence the people around them. And so I think you're also giving them that um, that reminder that the of, of to create that that opportunity to be the one to be uncertain, to be there in an in a, in a uncomfortable place, and, and say, "Hey, we'll figure this out." That is what a, a, a client wants to see. A prospect wants, "Oh, wow, they're so certain, they're so confident." This is a person I want to work with. So, I love what you're doing there, and and I, I got I'm going to put a put a little line here. I want I want to talk about now where is this going, uh, because I, I'm seeing sales departments growing in, and I'm seeing more people move into sales. I'm seeing sales. I mean, now you've got you know, software for sales. So people are selling from anywhere in the world. Remote sales teams is now, I mean, uh, the CEO of Microsoft said we had two years of digital transformation in two months because of quarantine and COVID. So things are moving fast now in, in into new directions. People are just ready to, 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 to be remote and to work with new technology. So where do you see sales going in the future and, 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 and do you growing as a, as a profession or what do you see? Great, great question. And, and I think we might all agree um, that we were, there was pressure and only the best and the brightest and the smartest companies were ahead of the pandemic. But that's where we should have been anyway, okay? <clears throat> um, so I'm, I, I mean, the sales education system in this country is, well, so they're, they're, we've grown. And when I started this, you know, when I got out of school and I, I, I joined and I'm teaching sales, the number of sa dedicated sales schools has just, you know, absolutely grown. <clears throat> um, so, but what we're teaching them hasn't kept pace as fast. All right. Mm. So here's my, here, here, let, let's throw, throw some cold water on our discussion at Ooh, this point. Right. Let's do it. Let's get uncomfortable. <laughs> it, yes. So my, my brothers and sisters think like, oh, yeah, 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 the pandemic, we've, we've switched because now we're, we're doing, you know, uh, you know, Zoom calls now, sales <laughs> calls, we're using Zoom. I'm like, it's like, no, you're doing a, a role play again. 
and you're just using technology. Is there a difference? Absolutely. Can we teach to that? Yes, we can talk about camera, lighting, uh, the fact that your, your meetings should be a little bit shorter, the, the rapport is not there. There's no last minute I'm walking to the door, maybe you walk me out to the parking lot. There's none of that. So that has changed. But fundamentally, folks, we're still talking the same damn things. We're not doing anything with the top of the funnel. We're not teaching them how to, um, how to prospect, um, how to how to qualify i mean because i tell my students every every time it's like look you guys are going to chase every lead possible in your 20s <laughs> certainly early 20s <laughs> i mean you, i chased everything you're going to chase everything and you finally realize is that our company is not set up to satisfy 100 percent of the total addressable market mm -hmm. and once you realize that and then you're like oh where where's our sweet spot what you know it's like so get out there though uh, you you i mean me, me telling you this is not going to stop you i said you just need to go out there and lose and you're really like well why am i investing in this it's probably not going to come to fruition then i have to ask for internal pricing and, and warranties and yada and it's like so where so that's you know part and parcel of your maturation but also your sales manager and everybody around you um so i don't think we're going where, where we need to go from an education perspective, uh, I think there's pockets in, and I'm trying to be part of that, you know, that pocket of, of change. Um, uh, and then here comes the uh, attention thing. I don't know what the hell the original question was. Oh, where are we going? Where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, so I knew I liked you. <laughs> um, you know what? Here, let me, let me do something a little bit unorthodox if you can. Sure. And I will, if you, if you permit me, I, I will, permit. um, I will narrate this for the uh, for the folks who are who are who are on who are on the the webcast. So awesome. here's here's where we're going. If you if you're if you're watching us, you can see the um, uh, the difference, uh, the generational difference. This is where we have to account for this. <clears throat> these G, these Z's, which are just started uh, graduating from college about two years ago. So you're just starting the infancy of these of these new z's coming into the into your workforce they're not like the millennials there's i mean, won't call it a love hate relationship but they don't they're not the same product so the tenacity of these z's is definitely different than the than the millennials there's a very um, clear defining line between them that is for sure yeah and again these are generalities they're gonna you're, you have we're all human beings but you know absolutely cookie cutter but this is you know asking asking human beings of a different generation at the same time element in their life. This was around 18 to 20 years old. They asked them these questions and the tenacity was, they were just so much had so had so much more tenacity, the Gen Z's and they didn't think everything had to be fun, 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 fun. And so you saw a huge dip, you know, of 43 points on the fun factor. Yes. So these people are, are not, are not the same. So what does that mean to the, the folks that you're hiring? Let me give you, a, let me give you another, another screen, if you permit me. I mean, I'm one of these kids who had a, a job in high school, teen. If you've never had a job, and my teens have not really ever had a job. They've been, you know, four years playing volleyball, uh, uh, both black belts, um, this, this, yeah, and this. Sure. It was never uh, easy for them to, you know, soccer. My son was on a robotics team, which I didn't even understand. I still don't understand what they were doing. <laughs> um, I thought it was battle bots. He laughed at me and then he didn't complain. <laughs> and I saw it. I'm like, holy cow. So they didn't do the traditional thing that you and I would have done, which was, you know, we showed up, we got minimum wage and we, the, we learned how to show up. We learned how to yeah. take direction and, you know, mm -hmm. boom. <clears throat> um, Punch a clock. Yes. And these, and, the, and, the, and, the, and these kids have been rubriced to death. Um, well, what's the rubric? And I talked to my friends, my age, who are not in education. They're like, says, I've never heard what a, in rubric is i don't know what a rubric it's like oh yes we have to outline everything that they need to do and i do that for i mean all the role plays all these things have rubrics except for a few things that have nothing well what's the rubric i said yes <laughs> what does that mean it's like you know if you're going to respond to an rfp you're going to get um a great way to cover your overhead you're never going to get rich uh, uh, selling, selling RFPs. Okay. You're going to cover overhead. You're going to keep people employed. You're going to hit a number maybe and yada, but you're not going to hit our huge revenue numbers. I said, so you're going to add value when the value is ill-defined. 
So you need to figure out how to how to do this. So this the reflection paper I asked, I didn't tell them. I mean, yes, I'd like, I think they all know, hey, try to use English, English language with you know the minimal amount of spelling mistakes out of. <clears throat> but I never told them, it's like, oh, I'm looking for this, 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 and you have to do this. And so I can score it and I'm gonna send it to you. No, there's certain things in my class this semester you're going to have to just listen, learn, and figure out how do I add value. And there's only a few of those, but it's like, ah, so these kids have been told what to do and they can't then independently think as easy on how to deliver, on how to deliver values. And then it rolls right into the next thing is um, um, if you're going to try to train these and skill up these kids in the same way you did previous generations, you're going to be at a loss. They are all about clicking and watching on their own time uh, gamification would be really, really cool, and, but they want to do it whenever, wherever, however. And mm -hmm. so that's a challenge for us. Um, that's a, well, all customers are right. They're always like that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but me, as I, we're trying to teach these young people on how to be effective out on the street with a, you know, in a sales job. Um, I, I mean, certainly the multimodality of this world is amazing. And if, if you want to really rain on a parade, what are you going to do? We're not, we're all, yeah, we're all going to get back together. Uh, and, and after this pandemic and we're just going to, what's going to change? No, no, no. We're, we want to get back to what we had. Like, like, no, that's not, I have been forcefully telling my opinion. on it's like, look, you guys, if you think we're going to go back to what we did before, like a 2019 education model, you're sadly mistaken. These, these students are going to return to classrooms, whether it's college with me or high school, and they're going to be used to double, uh, uh, you know, double tasking on everything, if not triple. Their attention is kind of, you got to grab them. Um, I said, so if you get in there and you're going to start to lecture-ish without having, uh, you know, some type of uh, um, um, engagement. Or engage, yeah, some that. type, some type, you're going to, you're, you're going to bore the crap out of them. Yeah. And then they're going to whip out their phones. And they're going to start playing and you up there in the front are going to be pissed because you knew you lost them and you're going to be angry at them. It's like, well, you know what? It's easier to change yourself first. So how can you engage, but still hold these people's feet to the fire? They're responsible for learning. You're responsible for your, cur your curating. We can talk about that. Talk about the, 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 the change, not only in sales reps, but certainly sales uh, professors. Um, I'm no longer strolling in with a book and some acetates, some PowerPoints and whatnot. Right. I'm, I was talking to a, I'm talking to a, a grad student just the other day and she's like, well, I don't get what this and this means. And I was like, all right. And so I was telling somebody else, I was like, you know, I don't think a lot of the students uh, and maybe the faculty still, part of my job now in a semester is to increase their network, increase their ability to go and, and, and meet a Chris online, link in with him with a message and tell and teach them how to do that. It says, you're not done I'm not done with you and you're not done with me, but the class is friggin' over. <laughs> now you have to go be a, a person on your own. Nice. You need, cause that's what this last week in this class is, what's the future of selling in this uh, digital selling uh, grad class? <clears throat> and they're asking this and I'm like, no, I need you to think outside of this class, talk to people, create. It's the coolest thing in the world that you can only use while you're a student. Use your student card. How many of us would actually blow off a student if they says, hey, I'm a student in the sales class and I'd like to ask two questions about this because I'm getting hammered. My professor doesn't like what I'm writing. Blah, blah, blah. Who of us would not say, yes, I want to talk to you. Or, let me help you figure out a way. Or if I couldn't do it this week, let me tell you, my, 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 my neighbor over here will absolutely, there's none of us that would turn you asses. That card goes away as soon as you graduate people mm. it's like oh hi i'm joe blow from xyz company i'm really curious about your industry I, I don't care i really don't what are you talking about um so just get them to understand that they need to uh my responsibility is not only content not only motivation therapist yada but also then give them the connections for the future um and that they were going to need to 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 cultivate mine and then eventually give back and and prime the pump for the next generation so i mean you're, you're changing human behavior is what you're doing i mean you're, you're really dealing with a lot with human behavior and, and i love the way that i mean like a true salesperson you you have this you're putting yourself in in the shoes of your students the, even the different generations even the different modalities the different groups and understanding how they're processing and thinking i mean that is that is the 
probably the best skill of a salesperson. A salesperson. I mean, if you can put yourself in in, in the the shoes of your client or your prospect and think and hear the way that they're going right. to receive the message that you're giving, I mean, you influence is all about that. I, I can't. I cannot tell you how many times I have brought the most logical put together plan and explanation to somebody, but did not take my time to put myself in their shoes, to take time to align, to take time to agree upon the things that I'm assuming, right? Don't ever assume something, even ask and restate, bring it to the surface again. Let's take the time, I mean, to align. And, and most people who are out there selling don't take the time to develop rapport or align. And, and I love the psychology of what you're doing and teaching out there and how important and invaluable it is for people to grow and learn. Let me hit one more thing on this. I have a couple other slides, but I know this is, um, I, I watched your other ones and nobody else did that. I'm like, ah, I'm a visual learner. Let's go. Let's throw it, it out there. It, throw it, roll it. Um, this is before the pandemic. This is the, this is a health survey at, at my university. And look at what that says. It says 81, 82% of the students feel overwhelmed. And this is pre-pandemic. 78 feel exhausted and 64% are very sad. So overwhelmed, 82, exhausted, 78, and very sad, 64%. We, we've, we've, we've kind of overloaded and, and hyperextended the, the pace of life for these you know, zero to 21 year olds. And it, show, and it shows up on their stress level. Um, for a host of, of societal ills and challenges that we have in the U.S., um, but just, you know, the growing pains of, you know, I mean, I can't think of a, a worse time of uh, in life as being a middle, uh, you know, a middle school student, right? Okay, so they got all these, 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 these challenges. Um, but remember that, um, you know, just as the boomers raised um, the, the millennials, the Xers are raising the Zs in general. And that and it comes with a different parenting style, a different belief structure, and that filters down into into the into the students and 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 who these human beings are. And one other thing, here's a typical day in the life of a of a, of a, a Z. Um, they're 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 multiple you know multiple screen. Wow. I mean, I've got I mean I've got the big computer, but I also now not a second screen. I've got a whole other computer, different laptop right here too. That didn't happen until well, a little bit before the pandemic. And then, but hanging out with these people, I've got to keep one step ahead of them. And so when I, and I was like, it's like, man, I don't know. I mean, my, my own, my own kids would think that I'm the, the oldest man on, on earth, but the, you know, the, these folks are keeping you young. So if you are a, a, a you know, a more mature sales manager, um, they're gonna they're gonna drink their own bath water just like we did. We absolutely did. Come on, this is not um, new. Yep. But look how their their brain. They're you know they're they're on devices. They're they're at three hours plus on on screens, two screens at the same time. My kids at first I blew a gasket. I'm like, what are you doing? My my kids will will be listening to music and writing a paper. I'm like, how, how you can't do that? How's it? <clears throat> my wife's like, leave them alone. It works for them. I was like, all right, all right. <clears throat> um, so anyway, there's a lot of, of, of differences between um, uh, and, and things that we will, we will have, to, have to face. And I'll, all right, I'll throw you one more here is that, you know, the Z's world, there's a lot of danger, tolerance, boundless access to anything and, and, and parents who in, empower them. Mm. Um, and they're pretty, they're, I mean, the number of students who, who do a role play with me, and then he's like, well, how'd I do? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, instant well, feedback. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Um, but here, here, here's what you, you do for these. Um, um, I mean, this is a real picture. Uh, uh, if you're, if you're watching this though, I told my students to do, I was like, Hey, you guys, we're not doing very well on this. I says, so, uh, and this, as you can tell, they're all their backpacks. They're about ready to leave class. And the, I'm like, well, what is that too? It's like, hmm, yeah, boom, all threw in, all gathered in their groups, all immediately grabbed on their screens and started doing it. It's like, that is a, a learned behavior of that generation and the willingness to help each other just say, oh, when they run into a tech problem, boom, boom, boom. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, um, I mean, here's four things, give a lot of feedback, number four, be visual, be real, be diverse. Um, again, I wrote these um, just before, the pandemic um, and everything that goes on with the changes in, in our in our culture, but um, yeah, so yeah, I think what what there's is there yeah there's a boatload of 
of changes. But I got more, Chris, if you're ready. <laughs> hey, this this is not our last conversation, sir. I, I, I know that for sure. Um, uh, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Justin Michaels, uh, one of our, or our favorites over here. And I, I caught your podcast over there and love the conversations that you're having. Um, love that we're having them. And, and I, I truly love, I mean, there's far too many people like, oh, Gen Z, oh, millennials are this or that. You, you have a, you have a very, oh, this, this is what it is. And, and let's, let's, let's manage and move it forward, right? Like, this is the way people are. Let's help them be this way. Let's help them make those shifts. And I think it's a, um, it sounds like you're creating a very safe place, which is a very important thing for these generations to be able to have that safe space to be vulnerable yeah. and to, to, to grow these skills, especially amongst their peers. Um, it, it's a very important and valuable thing that you're doing. And I, and I don't want to miss that point because most people aren't willing, especially these generations, aren't willing to put themselves through those types of schools, no. the, especially in front of people. And so- yeah. So I got this again, debrief paper. Just, I just read this a couple of days ago. This one gal, she says, I don't, I don't want to be out there. And like, well, first I'm like, I don't understand all these sales students that I get who don't want to, you know, speak in public. Like, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. So, so, but, but, but what she said was that I knew that I was going to face plan. Cause I tell them, I says, if you don't face plan at least once in this class, then you're, you're, then you're moving too slow. You need to face plan. Mm -hmm. I said, the cool thing is, is that everybody's going to face plan and we'll all laugh like, ah, that had a hurt. I'm like, okay, let's go because we're all going to do it. And multiple times. So th there, there is a need. It's, it's kind of, kind of a bipolar. There is a need to be safe for this, this latest generation, but at the same time, they're willing to share and do things that you and I, I mean, Thank goodness that you and I didn't grow up with with phones that recorded things, right? <laughs> I mean, put your hand up at home if you're happy that you are not one of that generation. Two like, hands up. Oh, the fact that yes. So I, I was like, thank God. Yeah. God knows if I could even have my professorial job if they would have found me in college. So I, I heard a guy tell. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I want to hear this story. Yeah, no, I, I heard a guy tell a joke the other day. He was talking about finding an old picture of his grandfather, right? He was rummaging through this barn, you know, that they had all the stuff stored in. And they'd never seen what their grand, great-grandfather looked like, but they found this old picture of him, this old black and white, you know. They probably had the guy holding a big light thing on the back. And and this guy was like, oh, surprise, right? I'm like, oh, my gosh, this looks like our family. And it was like this moment that they had from the, finding the one picture. And, and, he, and he says, you know, it's going to be great when, you know, when, when my son is, you know, and I've passed long ago and my, my, you know, my son or his son will go, Hey, would you like to see a million photos of every single thing my dad did and ate his whole life? I got it right here in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> the contrast is just so baffling and, and funny. It was a Norm McDonald joke. I think that I, I stole that from, but um, listen, I think the, 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 the gem there will be the one handwritten note. Did you see my, my grandfather in uh, 2001, Oh my God, he wrote a letter. We have a letter that he wrote on paper with a hand. And, you know, I guess, yeah. Um, I guess they did that back then. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's the old things, you know, the old footage, like Ken Burns and things. You, you oh, yeah, footage. yeah. Oh my God, that is so connecting. And you see a couple of photographs. Well, now we've got video evidence of everything. So, but it, it's, do we have that, that, that human element? Because we're all, you know, we're all so um, uh, snippets and it kind of, so we, we process differently and Absolutely. The, customer, um, the customer or the sales rep, they learn differently. They're mm -hmm. self-learning, they're self-paced. And we need to cater to how do, how does that customer go on the journey uh, externally, but internally then how do we, how do we get knowledge and capabilities downloaded into these uh, people's brains? Well, however, younger or older. So Absolutely. how is this self-paced learning and, and other changes like, um, you know, the director of sell sales will be, you know, the director of selling. It's not just a sales force. It's, it's a process and to create revenue and happy people, yeah. but it's selling and not a sales. It's, it's sales. relationships now, right? Now, now that the sales are forever with software and everything like that, it, it's not just a sale, a single moment in time. It is a, an ongoing relationship as is prospect, prospecting and everything else. And listen, uh, Robert, I know you've got another call. I know you've got another big meeting coming yeah. up here and I, we, we could talk all day, I think. Uh, here, let, me, let me throw you one more though, Oh please, because <clears throat> this is going to be a change. All right. The I think this was a Gartner study. Um, almost half, I think it was 44 percent 
of millennials would choose not to see a sales rep. Wow. So how do we deal with these people? Because they're they're finding more and more, and that's our job, is to put more and more available to, to the customers where they want it, how they want it, when they want it. Um, so the, the, yes, the, 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 the wow. job of sales is, is changing the, the role of sales, the sales rep, yada. Um, but if, if these millennials don't want to see us as much for human contact, okay, how does that change? Where do we become um, effective and whatnot? And that's one of the big challenges. Um, I mean, you're not going, well, we're going to be old school. And that, well, that's fine. But if these people somehow want to make kind of significant decisions without ever seeing you, uh, we've got a challenge on our hands on how we're going to, uh, because they still need to sell, uh, see us or interact with us in a complex sale, but they don't think they do. So how do we go about handling that? And, and that's, you know, if you, when, when and how you sell that is what's going to get you promotions and lots of money. And then you'll be as rich as Chris. He saved the gold for the very end. They were all y'all sticking through the podcast. Y'all got the gold at the very end here. Hey, Robert, listen, this has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, I mean, you're honestly with no with no fluff, no BS. You're, you're honestly making the world a better place. Um, and, and we truly grateful for that. Uh, one thing you said that I want to push pin in before we leave. Look, failure leads to growth. Falling leads to growth. There's nobody in the world that said, you know, I'm going to start walking today. And, the, and when they were born and the first time they felt like, you know what, I'm just going to crawl for the rest of my life. It's not even worth it. I don't even think I could do that. Oh, we fell and we learned, we fell and we learned. And then finally we fell, we, we stood up and we stayed up. Right. Love it. And so fall, learn to fall because when you learn to fall, you don't get as hurt when you fall anymore and it becomes easy. It becomes routine. And then when you fall, you're ready just to get back up again. You're not even worried about the fall and life is all about falling, stumbling and getting back up again. And, um, Listen, this is where we this is where we got our gray hairs, but also where we got our bucks, right? It is is by learning to get back up again. And so uh really appreciate you, Robert. Listen, for all y'all listening to the podcast today, thank you so much. Would love to have you here. Make sure that you subscribe, but also just click those little stars over there and uh and tell us how much you love this podcast and what you learned. And if you want, go ahead and leave a note, but but make sure just click those three stars. The one thing I'm asking, the only thing, just click those little stars. <laughs> Have a great day, y'all. Remember, everything leads to growth. And we're happy to have you here at the NASP. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.